Hello lovely people, I'm K3N, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about how to make twine out of strips of cloth um, and all the various issues, how to do it and all the various issues that you might run into if you try and do it. I do it a lot, I use it in a lot of different ways and I'll show you some of those ways at the end of this video. Okay, to get started, when you choose what kind of cloth you want to use, there's various things to bear in mind. Obviously the thickness of the strip will determine the thickness of the twine to some degree. Here's uh, just for an example, inch wide strips of quite fine cotton and that's and the twine, can you see that against my finger? I guess it's about a quarter of an inch in diameter. Uh, if you chose something finer, like this silk for example, and took a very narrow piece, it's about half an inch wide, those two twined together this is not how you do it, I'm just doing it to demonstrate, would be quite fine because the strips are narrow and the cloth is thin. It's fairly self-evident. Uh, another thing to bear in mind when you choose your cloth is this, for example, is a piece of indigo dyed sheet and it's blue on both sides. It doesn't have a wrong side or a right side. Whereas this piece, which is commercial cotton, is red on one side, but on the back it's much more beigey coloured. So bear in mind that as you twine, you don't really have any control over which side will show. It could possibly be that you get all beige or all red. I do try and make it be all red, but you can't really. So if it's really important to you, choose something like this again, which is a solid dye, which is the same colour on both sides. Just bear that in mind. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to, oh, by the way, I always tear my strips. You, you can cut them, you know, if you prefer with scissors or a rotary cutter. The reason I tear is then you get one long thread off the, the uh, edge of the cloth. If you cut, you might get lots of little bits of cloth as you cut across, slightly across the, the weave. I just prefer to tear, you know. Again, that's personal choice. You do you. I won't come to your house and put you on the naughty step if you if you cut your strips. Okay, so just to anchor this one end, I'm going to tie a knot, just a normal knot around my finger like that. I'm not going to pull it very tight. I'm gonna leave it like that. It's just to anchor it while I work because when I'm finished making my piece of twine, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I might want to put a bead on there um, or I might want to stitch something to it, a ring or something like that. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. If I pull it too tight, it'll be hard to undo. So, um, you hold it, I'm assuming you're right-handed. I do apologise if you're left-handed. I can't do it left-handed to show you. I would hope that you're used to flipping these things in your brain. Anyway, so if you're right-handed, you hold the, the where you've tied the knot in your left hand, pinch it between your thumb and forefinger, and then you lay it so you've got one strip away from you and one strip knit towards you. You start with the strip away from you and with your index finger you make a twist in it just like that and then you bring it towards you over the other strip and then at the same time without letting go you take your middle finger and you pull the other strand up ready into the away from you position which is the working position and you're still pinching that with your thumb and forefinger so it doesn't fall untwist then you let go of that and you do the same thing again, twist it away from you around your index finger, bring it towards you, at the same time hook the other strand under. So it's twist it away from you, bring it towards you, hook the other strand under. And at the same time, do you see I'm moving this pincer along to hold it? I'll do a few and just say the, the important words and not rabbit it on, so hopefully you can concentrate. Twist away, bring it towards you, hook under, twist away, bring it towards you, hook under. And there we go, we've got, this happens when you do it over a surface, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, now we've got about an inch of twine already done. And you see there, like I said, some places the red is showing and some places it's quite beige. So that's my choice of cloth. So 
I don't need to keep doing that for hours. If you need to see it again, then, you know, just scroll back a little bit through the video. You can watch that as many times as you like. So that's the basic of how you do it. At one point, you will probably, when you want to make longer lengths, need to attach more as you run out. So I've got this one here. <clears throat> you see this piece is about to run out here. So you can do one of two things. You could, the lazy way of doing it, excuse me while I get another bit of cloth, or the, the quick way of doing it, which, which works fine for most purposes, is as you come about two inches or so from the end, just overlap by a good couple of inches and then kind of fold the two in half together like so to make a little sandwich and then carry on with your twining but be careful not to pull too much on the one where you've just joined the new bit or you'll undo it you'll pull it out and just carry on twining and pinching with your left hand and hoping <laughs> see what happens uh, we'll try again oh dear dear I'll just whip along to get past that bit so no it's not going to work it's very slippery cloth oh dear me I don't do it like this because it doesn't work I know there are people that do try it it might work for you I'll show you the way I do it um, that's the principle anyway I actually stitch now it's you know something you have to do I have a, a little needle pin cushion next to me with a threaded needle in just with some normal thin sewing cotton and it's a work of moments just to stick a few stitches in and then you it's much quicker believe me than it keep coming undone <laughs> I could pretend I did that on purpose to show you why not to do it that way. Anyway, so in order to stitch them together, instead of just butting up the two edges uh, straight, like that, like that, and sewing there, I sew under an angle on the bias. It's a technical term, I believe. The reason being, if you sew it straight like that, you've put all the bulk of the double width width thickness of cloth in one place and there's one weak point there whereas if you stitch on the dub on the bias you spread the bulk behave yourself sit stay you, um, you spread the bulk further along the length of the the piece and also it's stronger because the stitching is spread along you know there's not just one spot where it's joined by stitch so in order to do that, what I do is, I'll show you with the, the red and the blue. Let me just probably see that better. <clears throat> so say this blue end, I'm going to join red to it. Probably I wouldn't in the real world. I'd join more blue, but you know, then you won't see. So you want to overlap them by about, you don't have to measure unless you want to, about the same as they are wide. So these are, let's say they're half an inch wide. So you want to overlap them by half an inch. They're quite tiny. And then you just put two or three stitches from this corner to this corner. I hope you can see that. Just along that diagonal line there. And then when you've done that, you can, I'll show you with this one, just trim off. You see that corner there, I just trimmed it off and left a little seam allowance. And then you can just happily twine away without worrying about it falling out. Another thing to say about joining is you might think it would be very sensible to sit with all your strips torn or cut and stitch them all together so you've got a great big long length or two great big long lengths to twine together. I wouldn't do that because as you twine, I'll go back to this one, let's move all this gubbins. As you twine, of course what you're doing at this end is mirrored down here. I'll do it a bit more just to make it really obvious. Do you see? So this is happening at the other end. So you imagine if you've got major yardage of strips that you've carefully sewn together, you're going to end up with a big tangly bird's nest. I, in general, do it either standing up, walking around even sometimes, um, or if I'm sitting, I try and have them hanging so gravity actually helps you as you work. So if you do it hanging, sorry, I'm right up in your face now. Ah! 
if you do it hanging then they they don't ravel up so much but if you're working only with short lengths I wouldn't go longer than about a meter I mean whatever your cloth is that you're tearing it's not probably going to be much more than a meter or so um, I wouldn't try and twine longer longer strips so just as you come to the end I would then join as you go I hope that's clear the final thing to say about joining um, if you're coming along here and this one's going to run out at the same point as this one ran out I would not make the two joins in the same place because it is a slight weak point and there's the bulk so if you make the two joins in the same place you've got quadruple bulk basically instead of only double bulk what I would do in that case is if I was twining here and I saw this strip Say this strip was longer and I saw that this strip was going to run out where I've joined that I would cut this back further and make the join up here somewhere is that clear all clear that's very good okay um, if that's not clear just put something in the comments please be kind I'm quite new to this and now I'm going to go on and talk about what you can do with all this lovely twine when you've twined it Okay, we've looked at the twining and all the issues with regards to the twining. Now I just wanted to show you a few things you can use the resulting little twiny things for. You can use them to wrap gifts, just for tying round things that you want to look a little bit attractive. Or you can use them, I, well I'll show you what I use them for. If I make a little pouch, which I often do, this is one of my sewing pouches. I like to use a twine closure, you see here I've got, here's my twine and it's just stitched on there to the, there's the pouch open and I've got some needles and threads in it because however much you put in there, if I stuff this full of, of thread, it's in, infinitely, that's, it's not infinite, but you know, you can have it open more or close more and still be secured by the twine and all I do in that case just really simple low tech is I just wrap the twine around and then I just tuck it under on itself and there I've put a little wooden bead on the end just as an aside because the twine's quite thick it's quite difficult to find beads with a big enough hole to go on these I used to have dreadlocks so I had lots of um, dread beads and those are ideal because they've got the big hole in so if you can pick those up anywhere, they're, they're very good for if you want to thread thick things through. So that's that as a closure for a pouch. The other thing is I use them when I make my stitch journals. And I wanted to show you this one because uh, not only is it wrapped with the, the twine, but this twine I've made from, if I show you the end, can you see that? It's one length of silk that was about, well, I've just broken a bit off, oh dear, it was about half an inch wide. And the other piece is a, actually a piece of, of string. So I twined some silk and some string, it just a slightly different look. And this I then stitched to this little wrap that I made, which is just a bit of crocheted lace and some eco print cloth on the back and I just did some stitching to hold them together. And then I sewed my twine to it where the spine of the book comes when it's closed. And I've just sewn that little button on there just to, you know, stop saying you know, to, to hide the join. And here's a little book that lives in it, which I'll be showing more of at a later date. So that's to, to go around the book wrap. You can also use them. Here's an actual book. This is actually in the in one of the playlists, which is called, I'll just move those a little bit out of the way, which is called Journal Flip Throughs. Uh, so if you want to see inside this, that's where it is. Here I've done a very fine twine, a very thin twine. If I show you the ends, they were silk, which is very thin. Actually, that's quite wide, but because it's silk. But that one there is really fine silk. So that's made a really thin, I would say that's an eighth of an inch in diameter because the way it closes around this book, this is my, my granny's book, it's my granny, 
the way it closes around this book is actually attached to the book itself by this tab of cloth. I've put a button with a shank as opposed to, you know, the holes, it's got a shank. So the twine then needed to be thin so that it would wrap around the button to hold it closed. So there's that one. Uh, the other thing you can use them for is to make drawstrings. I make a lot of these little bags based on a Japanese rice bag or komibukuro design. This is something I'm thinking at one stage I might do a little video showing how I make these. Again, dreadlock beads, rather funky ones, but these are glass and silver. So you see they've got a nice big hole because you have to get your dreadlock through them. So they're ideal for threading on your twine. Uh, I've used the twines here to make the drawstrings. So there's two there that go through opposite corners. And there's some knitting. <laughs> so that's another use for them. Um, yet another use. How have you been living this long without twine in your life? Is you can make little vessels. Now I do make them, sometimes I make just a base out of twine. And again, this is something else I might, well, I will show at one point how I make twine into, into a, a flat piece. So you could make coasters or things like that. I have also made, I haven't got any here, unfortunately, to show you. Well, not unfortunately, because they've sold them all. But the, I made the base with the, the twine stitched together in a spiral. And then the sides I made with a piece of cloth. So that's again something that I'll show you at one point. <clears throat> this is a really organic vessel which I made with all different thicknesses of twine and it was just an experiment but it's really nice and tactile and you know funky. Uh, what else? What else? Here I've got, uh, got stuff in that might have been handier to take the stuff out. I'll take the stuff out. Excuse me a minute. Tipping the stuff out. There we go. This is a basket that I've made using all kinds of little bits of scraps of cotton. This was all quilters cotton, I think. I actually stitched this on the sewing machine. These days I mostly stitch by hand, but it's the same principle. You just make, you know, yards and yards and yards and yards. I wouldn't like to say how much was in here. And then you coil and stitch. This I was taught how to do by my friend Tracy. There are many, many. I'm not sure I'm going to be showing any machining methods on my channel. Um, I'll show the hand stitching version, but if you have a look, there are many, many excellent tutorials on how to make fabric twine bowls. Some people do them with a piece of string. Here's one that I made earlier. Just happened to be sitting on my desk. This is completely different. You, you see the difference in the look. This is actually cotton washing line with strips of cloth wound round it, and there you see much more clearly the machine stitching, holding that together. It's much stiffer, it's much stiffer, sturdier construction. Whereas this one, which is made from the twine, an own, only twine cloth, is much softer. So it's just, you know, what you want to use it for or what sort of look you like. I like these soft ones. You could also make hats. I'm just looking at it this way up and imagining a brim. I'm not going to put it on my head and show you. You have to use your imagination. So you can make bowls with it, vessels. Here's another one. This has got some of my some of my extensive collection of spools and pegs and things. Made with twine, much thicker. So there's only like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen twines high, if you want to call it that. And at the top I left two lengths at each side to make some little handles. So that's made that little basket. See the bottom's gone a bit indented. That's shoddy workmanship, but there you go. Don't see it when it's stood on its bottom. And here's another book wrap. That's, I mean, it's the same principle as the, the other book that I showed you. There I've used silk and cotton together. So just experiment with different pieces of cloth. If you're not sure how they're going to look, you can just make a little short length like I've done here for example if you just tie your two bits of thread together and just just as a quick reminder you twist away bring it towards you 
hook the other strand under. Twist it away, bring it towards you, hook the other strand under. You could just do a few twists and have a look and see how is it for thickness, how is, you know, do you like the combination of colours, does it feel nice? For example, the one with the string when I first made it was quite stiff, but as I've handled it, it's loosened up. So that's it. That's everything there you need to know about twine, I hope. If you have any questions or comments, then please feel free to comment um, below. And thank you for watching. See me next time for more cloth tales. Thank you. Bye bye.